Welcome to Electron Line. On the previous three videos, we did a, I should think about what I was going to say, projectile <laughs> towards a, oh man, it's so hard to start sometimes. Okay, all right. Good? <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah. Welcome to Electron Line. Now let's do a problem where we fire a projectile with an inclined plane that has a downward slope. In other words, from where we fire it, the inclined plane is sloped downward at an angle of 15 degrees below the horizontal. The projectile is fired at an angle of 30 degrees above the horizontal with an initial velocity of 20 meters per second. The question is, where on the incline will it land, presumably before we get to the very bottom of the incline? Notice that the height here is 50 meters, the angle here is 15 degrees, so let's go ahead and see how we would approach a problem like that. Well, it's kind of the same way as we approach any projectile motion problem. Let's try to find the time in the air and let's start with the y component first. Before we do that, let's find the x and y components of the initial velocity. So in the x direction, we have v initial in the x direction is equal to v initial times the cosine of the angle theta. So this would be 20 meters per second times the cosine of 30 degrees, which is 0.866. If we double that times 20, that should give us 17.32 meters per second as the initial velocity in the x direction. Doing the same for the y direction, we have v initial in the y direction, which is v initial times the sine of 30 degrees. And of course, in this case, that would be 20 times the sine of, well, the sine of 30, that would be one half. And so therefore this would be 10 meters per second as the initial velocity in the y direction. And that's the one we need for this next equation. Because time in the air, we'll use the equation that y equals y sub naught plus v sub naught in the y direction times time plus one half g t squared. Now this y right here, that will be the y we're looking for. How high above the ground will it be when it lands on that inclined plane? We have initial height of 50, so let's put in what we know. y is equal to 50 plus a positive 10 meters per second because the component of y direction is positive. So it'd be 10 meters per second times t. And since g is a negative 9.8, this becomes a minus 4.9 t squared. And notice we have two unknowns, we don't know the time, and we don't know the position in the y direction when it lands. So typically what we do then is find the second equation in the x direction and see what we get there. So time in the air. And notice in the x direction we want to have an acceleration term because there's no force in the x direction. And we'll call x up not equal to zero. So let's say that we start at the zero point right here. So this point here we can say that x sub not equals zero. Therefore, we get x equals v sub naught in the x direction times time. So that's a much simpler equation. We only have the middle term here to deal with. We don't know x, we don't know time, but we do know the velocity in the x direction initially. So x equals 17.32 meters per second times time, which means that, hmm, let's see here. What shall we do next? I'm inclined to go ahead and solve this for t and plug that in here, but then I'll have an x and a y in the same equation, and I don't know either one of the two, which means I need to find the relationship between the x and the y. And that, of course, comes from the slope right here. What we can say here is that, hmm, let's use the tangent of theta. So we can say that the tangent of theta is equal to the opposite side divided by the adjacent side, which in this case, the opposite side would be y sub naught, the adjacent side would be x sub naught, that would be the full distance, well, let's see here, we can't call it x sub naught because I called x sub naught this, so let's call this x sub one, all right. So that would be the full length of the incline, so let's call it x sub one. Now we know what y sub naught is, we know the angle, that allows us to find x sub 1. We can say that x sub 1, the length of the incline in the horizontal direction, is equal to y sub naught divided by the tangent of theta. 
And y sub naught, that's the 50 meters, divided by the tangent of 15 degrees. And now let's see here, get a calculator. So 50 divided by the tangent of 15 equals, and we get 186.6 meters. So that's the length of the incline. That still doesn't give us the relationship between x and y. But what I'm looking at here is I'm looking at a straight line so I can come up with an equation like the straight line equation y equals mx plus b. Where m is the slope, and of course that will be negative slope, and b is the y-intercept, that's known that would be the 50 meters assuming the origin is right here. So in this case that would be mx plus 50. Now the question is what is m equal to? Well, m is the slope of that incline, which is the ratio of the rise over the run. In this case, of course, the rise is a negative number. So we can say that y is equal to the negative rise, that would be a negative 50 meters, divided by the run, which would be the 186.6 times x plus 50. And taking the inverse of that and multiplying times 50. Oh, let me try it again. 50 divided by 186.6 equals a minus 0 0.268 x plus 50. So now here we have a relation between y and x using that y equals mx plus b type of equation. Now what I can do is solve this for, let's see here, solve this for x. So we end up with x is equal to, let me write that as a y, so if I want to solve this for x, or actually better yet, better yet, what I can do here, so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to eliminate one of the variables, what I can do here is replace this value here for y, and I know that y is equal to this, and then I can replace t by using this equation, I can write here that t is equal to x divided by 17.32 and plug that into the values t here and I can use this equation y equals minus 0.268x plus 50 and plug that in here. That way I've eliminated x and y and I've only got the variable t left. Oh no, I only have the variable x left. All right, let's do that. So here we get minus 0.268x plus 50 equals 50 plus 10 times. We have x divided by 17.32 and minus 4.9 times x squared divided by 17.32 squared. There we go. Now we end up with an equation that only has the variable x, which will give us the value the horizontal distance where the object will land on the inclined plane. Notice here that the 50s cancel out on both sides and now I can simplify this. Let me use a calculator. So moving this to the other side we get 0 is equal to positive 0.26x plus 10 divided by 17.32 gives us 0. 577x minus 4.9 divided by 17.32 squared x squared. Okay, simplifying that a little bit more, combining these two terms. So plus 0.268 equals, that gives us 0 is equal to 0.845x. Minus, and then simplifying that, 4.9 divided by 17.32 squared equals, and we get 0.0163x squared. Now we're ready to solve that for x. It's a simple quadratic equation that doesn't have the constant term, which makes it easier. So we get 0 equals x times 0.845 minus 0.0163x, like that. And then the only two solutions we can have that x equals 0, which means the starting point will be on the inclined plane at x equals 0. And the second value, let's come up here, 
We get that when we set 0 equal to 0 0.845 minus 0.0163x. Now we can solve that for x and let's see what we get. x is equal to a minus 0 0.845 divided by a minus 0 0.0163 and k times 0.845 equals and that leaves us with 51.7 meters. That's the horizontal distance our projectile will reach from here to there. It's equal to 51.7 meters. And then using our other equation right here, we say that y is equal to minus 0 0.268 times 51.7 plus 50 equals, okay, so times 0.268 minus equals plus 50 equals. And we can see that y is equal to 36.1 meters and that would be above y equals zero so from there to there is a height of 36.1 meters slightly off in the drawing but we'll just ignore that finally if you want to find the time you can then take this equation plug in the 51.7 divided by 17.3 and just in case you want to know what that is equal to so we take 51.7 divided by 17.32 and we get time is equal to 51.7 divided by 17.32 equals, and we get 2.98 seconds for the total trip of the projectile. And that's how we work with a projectile that's fired over a negative slope or an inclined plane that has a downward slope. And that's how it's done.